In this video, I'm going to show you how to sew a sweatshirt just like this one. Let's get into it. Hey guys, it's Elizabeth from ElizabethMadeThis.com helping you sew something creative. If that is right up your alley, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Today I wanted to show you guys how to sew a sweatshirt. So the one, the sweatshirt that I'm wearing is just a variation of a raglan t-shirt. So I'm going to show you how you can take a basic raglan t-shirt and modify it so that you can make a sweatshirt out of it. And then I'm going to show you how to make a sweatshirt from top to bottom. So a little bit about the fabric that I'm using before we get into it. I am going to suggest that for this project you're going to use just regular sweatshirting fabric. You can get that at a fabric store. In my case, in my case, I found actually a sweatshirt that I could deconstruct and reconstruct so that it fit me better. And I, f I found this really cool pretty blue and then I bleach dyed it. I'm going to leave a link in the description that tells you how you can bleach dye your own, your own fabric. That's actually something that works really well for sweatshirting fabric, especially if you find one that's like a little bit darker color you want to do something interesting with it, I will leave that description so you can go check it out. Just so you know, you don't have to start with a sweatshirt and then go through the process of deconstructing it. But just so you know, I'm throwing it out there that this is a refashion project for me because I have some interesting seams that you will not see in the final project if you're starting from scratch for this. So just something to keep in mind as we're going through this tutorial. Don't worry about it. We'll get into it. The other thing I'm going to say is that because I'm using a sweatshirt that I deconstructed, there was already ribbing, so that, that extra stretchy knit that is on the cuffs and on the hem and also on the neckline, that is something that came off of my original sweatshirt. If you don't have access to finding ribbing, I, I'm going to suggest that you use a knit that has a little bit more stretch to it something that has some, some, some weight to it, something that when you pull on it, it's going to snap right back because that's really what ribbing is doing. It's, 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 you place it on your neckline and on the cuffs and on the hem so that when you pull it over your head, it fits your head, right? <laughs> so that's the purpose of ribbing. And I will also leave a, just leave a link in the description to some, uh, some sources where you can find some ribbing fabric if that's something that you're having a hard time Finding. So that's all the basics of getting into the tutorial. Let's jump into the tutorial and I'll see you on the other side. So let's talk about how to make a DIY sweatshirt pattern from a raglan t-shirt pattern first. So the first thing you want to do is take your front piece and you're going to extend the side seam down right at the bottom of the armhole and then draw a vertical line straight down to the hem. And then after that, just cut off two inches from the hem. So that's what you need to do for your front piece. Next, for your back piece, you want to extend that side seam down there at the bottom of the armhole Just draw and then draw a vertical line straight down to the hem just like you did for the front piece and then also cut two inches off from the hem. And the last thing you want to do for the pattern pieces are to add a half an inch to the side seams right at the bottom of the armhole just like the other two pieces and then draw, draw a line straight down to the hem and then add or subtract length as you need to on your sleeve piece so that the bottom of the sleeve ends two inches right above the wrist and that's going to leave space for the ribbing. So you need to cut one front, one back, two sleeves, one neckband, and also some ribbing, but we'll take care of the ribbing later in the video. So first things first, go ahead and fold your front piece together so that the, so it's right on the center front line and then make a mark one inch away from that center front line and then two inches down and then draw a line with, with a washable marker there. And then we're going to cut that part away. So this is gonna make a little triangle that we're going to fill up with your ribbing. So you can go ahead and just cut along that line just like I've done here and do not throw away that piece because we're going to use it in the next step. So now I've got my little triangle there and I'm just going to put it on top of a scrap of my ribbing fabric and then I'm just going to mark a quarter inch on all of the sides there. So I'm just taking my washable marker out there and I'm just going to mark a little quarter inch line on all of these those sides this is going to give us a little seam allowance which we can sew into that that gap that we've we've cut out of our sweatshirt so this ribbing this is kind of a detail that you see on a lot of ready to wear uh, sweatshirts so that's what we're going to do here so now i'm just going to grab my scissors and i'm just going to cut right on the lines that i made there and then we're going to take this to the sweatshirt and we're going to start pinning it together so that 
we can sew it in. Okay, so I've got my piece and I'm gonna flip it over. So I've got right side to right side there. I'm just gonna put it, pop a pin in there. And now we're gonna take it to the sewing machine. We're just gonna sew right down that little part and then we're gonna flip it over and sew the other side. So now I've got my machine set to a zigzag stitch with a 0.5 width and a 2.5 length. And I'm just going to sew with a quarter inch seam right down to the bottom of my triangle right there. When I get to the bottom of my triangle, right, right near the tip, I'm not going to sew all the way to the tip, so I'm going to stop about a quarter inch shy of that. I'm just going to go ahead and clip my threads there so I can flip everything over. It's a little bit easier, I find, to just go ahead and clip, clip everything before I just do the other side. So now I'm going to flip everything over so I've got right side to right side again, and I'm going to sew down the other side of my triangle. So I'm flipping everything over. You can see I, I'm, I'm actually backing up a little bit there and just kind of stitching over those last few stitches that I did before. And I'm gonna kind of pivot everything around with my presser foot up. You can see the fabric is being kind of grumpy with me right there. <laughs> so when I'm right when I'm right there at the tip, I'm gonna stitch about two two stitches right there, right there at the, the tip of that V. That's just gonna make it so that I get a nice smooth, smooth curve, smooth V right there at that point. So I'm just gonna anchor my needle right there and then stitch two stitches. And now I'm gonna pivot and stitch all the way to the end of the V. So now go ahead and just clip your threads there. And now we're gonna go ahead and finish the inside of this. So I'm just pressing with my hands the seam towards the body of, of the sweatshirt. And now I'm just going to stitch down kind of close to, to where that seam line is, just, just on about an eighth of an inch away from that. So I'm just getting my needle anchored there and I'm just gonna keep on stitching all the way around that V. So let's just go ahead and do that. So stitchy stitch stitch right there close to that stitch line just always making sure that that seam is pressed towards the the body of the garment I'm just gonna pivot everything around at the bottom of the v there again i'm just making sure that that seam is pressed towards the body of the garment so just go ahead and finish up sewing this little part and then we'll get on to sewing our sleeves so now we need to pin our sleeves to the front side of our sweatshirt. So I've got my sleeves and I'm gonna pin the front part of the sleeve to the front. So just, just using one pin per sleeve there, nothing fancy here. Okay, after that's done, then we're going to just stitch those all together. But first let's pin the backs to the sleeve as well. So I'm using the back side of the sleeve and I'm gonna pin that to the back piece of my of my sweatshirt pattern there. So just using one pin per thing, and now let's take it to the machine and let's get stitching on the sleeves. So I'm just stitching one of the, the back sleeve, 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 sleeves there. I'm just stitching down everything. I'm using a 3 8 inch seam allowance, but you go ahead and use whatever seam allowance you have in your particular pattern. Just going to keep those edges hanging out together, making sure that they're even as I'm stitching. Okay, so you're gonna repeat that for the other back sleeve seam. And then while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and do a front sleeve seam as well. That's kind of the nice thing about raglan, raglan sleeves. You can kind of do them all in one, in one fell swoop. Just do all of the sleeve seams all at the same time. So it's very efficient, very quick sort of pattern to make. I'm just anchoring my needle and then I'm going to go and cut and stitch down the front side of my sleeve seam there. See, I've got that little notch there that I cut for my front, the front side of my sleeve. The front, the front side of the sleeve looks different because it's part of the neck. So it's a little bit different than other things. Okay, so let's go and finish these. So now here I am, I'm at my serger. This is just one way to finish the seams. Uh, you don't have to do this if you don't have a serger, but I'm just go ahead and, and using my serger to just stitch over those raw edges. And then we will eventually sew those in place so they say sit flat. 
So that is finishing all of the sleeve seam allowances on that. So now I'm just gonna keep on finishing off the sleeve seams here. I've got one of my other sleeve seams. I'm just gonna, again, just use my serger to do this. If you don't have a serger, you can use a zigzag stitch. You're also using sweatshirting, so you don't have to have to use a serger in the first place. It just makes a nicer internal, internal stitch there, so cutting off those threads. Let's take it back to the machine. You can see I've got my finished seam there. And so now what we're gonna do is we're going to stitch from the right side. I've got my sleeve seam pressed towards the, the body of the garment and I'm just going to stitch down that seam. This is just gonna help all those seams stay flat on the inside and so they're not flopping around. So it's gonna be a lot more comfortable to wear. When you've got heavy knits like this, this is a really good way to finish seams. And again, like I said, you don't have to have to finish those seams because they're, they're knits. It's, it's not going to fray on you. It just looks nice on the inside. You could also do this with a cover stitch machine. That also looks really nice, but this is a perfectly lovely way to do this. So now what we need to do is sew the side seams and also the underarm seam. And we're going to do that in one fell swoop. But first off, we're going to, based on either side of where that under, underarm seam meets the side seam, I always like to try and do this because it helps you just get a nice crisp seam intersection. intersection. So just go ahead and sew about half an inch on either side. And if you miss it, just go ahead and pull out those threads and try again. It really just takes a couple seconds to do that. And it makes such a big difference in getting a nice clean seam intersection. So now we're going to go ahead and sew that whole long seam and yeah, that's what we're going to do. So whatever your seam allowance is on your particular sweatshirt pattern, go ahead and use that. I'm using three eighths of an inch right here. I'm just going to anchor my needle, start stitching. I'm using a 3.0 millimeter length uh, stitch. And again, I'm still using that narrow zigzag stitch, 0 0.5 width, and then 3.0 length. And the reason why I'm using a longer length is because the this sweatshirt sweatshirt fleece is much thicker than a lot of other a lot of other fabrics and what we've been doing up to this point. So it needs that longer stitch so that it looks right. So just go ahead and sew all the way down that seam and repeat for the other side. And then all we have to do is add the cuffs and the neck, the neckline, and this sweatshirt is gonna be done. So really quick, very quick project. Okay, so now we're going to sew the neck band together. So I'm just gonna fold those raw edges together, right sides together, and then I'm just going to sew along that short side with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then you wanna go ahead and press this open. So now I've got my neck band. You can see I press, I press it open and I also folded the raw edges together and press them so my neck band is in half. And now I need to quarter, quarter the neck band. So I'm folding the seam, the seam together and then folding it again. And I'm just gonna mark off all those quarter points right along those folds there that I'm, that I'm making here. Once we finish this, then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing to the sweatshirt neckline. The neckband is much shorter than the, than the neck, the neckline of the this, this sweatshirt. So this is why we have to do this. So I'm just going to fold the seams together. I'm going to find my center, my center front there, just fold it, fold along where that little triangle is. That gets my center front there. And then I'm gonna fold the shoulder seams together so that I can find center back. So I'm just folding everything together. Again, I have, I have more seams here because I, this is a refashion for me, but there's my shoulder seam right there. I'm just gonna fold that together and that's where my center back is. So I'm gonna pop a pin in there and then I'm gonna fold the center back pin to the center front pin and then fold those edges together and that'll help me find the those the other quarter quarter marks for my my neckline of the here. The reason why we want the the neckband to be shorter than the neckline is because it's that ribbing has a little bit more stretch to it and also if it's shorter it's going to sit flat against our neck. If it's too, if it's if it's the same length it's just going to be floppy and it's going to look terrible. So this is why we do this. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab my neck band and I'm gonna go ahead and match the quarter marks to the quarter marks. So starting with that 
that seam, we're going to make that our center back pin. And I'm just going to pop my pin in right there. And I'm going to ma match the next quarter point. And just pin both of those layers together. Just take out that extra pin. You don't need it. Mark the next one. Pin the layers together. And we're going to do the same thing with that last pin. And then we will take it to the machine. And just so that you can see, you can see when I pull it up, like how much more space there is that we're going to have to, we're going to have to stretch out that ribbing as we sew it. Okay, so now we're at the machine and I'm just going to sew everything together with a quarter inch seam allowance. And instead of stretching it, I'm just going to curve my hand towards the needle and just kind of ease the neck band into, into the neckline. I want to make sure that I'm not stretching out that under layer because then it's going to, again, lead to a nice a floppy thing and we can't fix that once we've done that. Sweatshirt fleece does not have any, any kind of recovery, so if we stretch it out, it's done. It's done. Okay, so instead we're just going to be really careful with our hands and I'm just going to curve it towards the needle and it will ease in as it's sewn along. No problem. Sewing along with that quarter inch seam allowance. And you might think, hey, like, why don't you have 18 million pins here? You really only need these four. It's kind of weird, but it's a very small amount of space. Your hands can totally handle not having more pins than this. Okay, so when I get around to where I started stitching, I'm just going to overlap my stitches by a little bit. Again, you can, you can finish this off with a serger if you would like to. So now I'm just going to top stitch down that raw edge of my seam from the, from the, top, from the front side. I'm just going to press that. I've already pressed this seam towards, towards the body of the, the sweatshirt here. And I'm just going to stitch it down about an eighth of an inch away from where that seam is. This is just going to help keep everything flat on the inside and, keep, and looking nice. And I'm sewing still with that, that narrow zigzag stitch. And I've lengthened it to about 3.0 millimeters. And that's all you have to do to finish off the neckline. So pretty quick process here, as you can see. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the cuffs. So first thing you want to do is measure your wrist. So wrap a measuring tape around your wrist right there at the bottom. And then we're going to add half an inch to that, to that length. And that's how, how wide we need to cut our cuffs. You want to cut two cuffs, four and a half inches tall and the measurement of your wrist times one half, and then go ahead and press those in half with the raw edges together, just like we did with the neckband. So here I've got my cuffs and you want to make sure that you cut two of them. And now I've got my waistband and let's talk a little bit about the ribbing that you need to cut for your waistband. So wrap the ribbon around your, around your hips and you want to cut one waistband that's six and a half inches tall and the width that sits comfortably around your hips. So you don't want to stretch it too much, but to where it feels tight, but you want to fit it, you want to wrap it around you so that it sits comfortably and whatever that, that measurement is, go ahead and use that measurement plus a half an inch so that we can sew a seam. So here I've got my waistband and you can see I press the raw edges together just so that it is folded in half and it's ready to go. And now what we need to do with both of our cuffs and the waistband is we're going to just fold them right sides together. We're going to open them, open them up where those raw edges where we folded them. And then we are going to just sew down those short sides with a quarter inch seam allowance. So that's what we need to do for the waistbands. So we're just going to stitch right there. And then we'll do the same thing for each of the cuffs as well. So I'm kind of just folding those raw edges together, right sides together, and I'm going to sew down the short side or in the case of the cuff, kind of the long side, <laughs> you get it, you get it. So I'm folding my cuff, I'm opening it up. I'm going to sew down that side of it 
I'm just sewing you one cuff here. You know that you need to do two of them here. I'm just sewing it with a quarter a quarter inch seam allowance. And we're keeping them sh we're keeping the seams small so that they don't create a lot of bulk when we go to, to sew them there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the waistband, just sewing that short side together. And then we'll get ready to sew them into our sweatshirt here. So now I've got my cuff, it's all, it's all ready to go. I'm gonna open up that seam, just press it over on itself and just fold the cuff so that it, we see the right side out there. And I'm going to just kind of mark halfway on the other side from my seam and I'm gonna match the seam to the seam and then pin, pin those guys in place. And then we're gonna sew with the cuff, with the cuff side up. It's easier to sew from the inside than it is from the outside. Uh, so I have my my sweatshirt inside out there and I'm just popping the cuff the cuff inside of that and then I'm gonna sew right in that little tiny tube there with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna match that other that other pin to the, the half marking on the sweatshirt. I don't need to quarter this because this is these are teeny tiny seams. But just that that little half point allows me to ease that ease ease that cuff into that slightly larger area of the bottom of the sweatshirt there. Okay, if you want to finish this off with a serger and and top stitch it, it's you can do that just like we did with the neckline, but you don't have to do that. This is a really tiny tiny little little hole and you might find it difficult to do that, but you can see I did go ahead and serge that and that's more than enough seam finish for that particular thing. So now we need to add the ribbing on the bottom and that's it. So just like we quartered, we quartered the, the neckline, we're gonna quarter, we're gonna quarter the bottom. So I folded my side seams together, that gives me a quarter point and I'm just finding those other quarter points and I already quartered the waistband the same way. And I'm gonna match my seam on the waistband with one of the side seams and then I'm just gonna match all the other quarter points. This is not, we don't have to ease this this into, into the bottom as much as we did with the neckline because the, the bottom is very is very straight. So there's not there's no curve really that we're dealing with here. So there's a little bit of stretch here that we've gotta do, but really it's it's not that big of a deal. So now I'm gonna sew on with the waist with the waistband side up and I'm just going to stitch everything together just to finish it off. We're almost there, guys. We're almost there. This is how you sew a sweatshirt. This is so simple, right? So I'm just gonna sew with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around, just keeping those raw edges even between the between the pins there. Remove the pins as you sew. Sometimes I forget and I sew over pins. Try not to do that. <laughs> okay. When you get to where you started stitching, just go ahead and overlap your, the first stitches that you made. And then we're gonna go ahead and finish this off at the serger. Again, you don't have to do this. It just makes it really nice looking. If you wanted to do something alternatively, you could you could finish this off with a cover stitch machine, but I realize that most people do not have a cover stitch machine, so you don't have to do that. And again, you don't even have to do it with the serger. It works perfectly lovely. So now I'm gonna top stitch my seam down just so it lays flat, just like we did on the neckline. I'm just sewing uh, a, a little bit more than an eighth, an eighth of an inch away from my seam there. I'm actually using that little line on my on my presser foot to kind of ride along right along the seam. So just visually, that's that's what I'm watching right now, so that I get a nice even stitch all the way around. And once we finish this, then our sweatshirt is gonna be done. Again, just overlap your stitches and then cut off your threads, and that's it. So that's how you sew a sweatshirt. I hope you had a good time just running through this tutorial. I hope this is something that you tried. If you do, let me know. I'd love to see it. You can always email me elizabethmaythis at gmail.com or hit me up on Instagram at elizabethmaythis. And I hope you have a good rest of your day and I will see you later. Bye. 
So I hope you had a good time figuring out how to sew a sweatshirt. There's lots of other cool stuff here happening on Elizabeth Made This, so go check that out, and I will see you in another video. Bye!